بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد continuing on in our study of كتاب تهارة and عمد تحكام we read hadith number four and in this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم we're still in the باب كتاب تهارة which we're going to do our best to complete and we read another hadith of Abi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. An Abi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal Ida tawadda ahadakum fal yajal fi anfi ma yantum ala yistantar wa man yastajmara fal yutir wa ida stakada ahadakum min nawmihi fal yagzil yadayhi kabla in yudkhilahuma fil inai thalathin fa inna ahadakum la yadri ayna batat yaduhu وفي لف لمسلم فليستنشق بمن خريه من الماء وفي لف من من توضى فليستنشق هو بخاري مسلم. In this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم narrated by Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, if one of you makes wudu, if one of you makes wudu, then put in his nose, then enter water into his nose. Then blow it out. So sniff water into the nose and blow it out. And if one of you and whoever makes istijmar, istijmar meaning uses rocks, uses stones or something in order to uh, clean themselves, to make istinja, to clean their private parts after using the restroom. If, if one of you makes istinja, then make sure that it is witter. Make sure that it is an odd uh, number, meaning uh, at a minimum of three. No less than three. Not one, but three. A minimum. And the, as the Prophet ﷺ said, and he said, and if one of you uh, wakes up from sleep, then wash his hands before he enters them into the bucket three times. So wash your hands three times before you enter into the pail that you're using to make wudu from. For verily one of you does not know where they uh, had their hands during the night. So in this hadith, and then in another narration, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, So put uh, water in your nose, uh, put water in your nose. And in another narration, whoever makes wudu, then they should put water in their nose. So this shows us the importance of of uh, of cleaning out the nose and that it is one of the places uh, of wudu uh, or one of the places that we must clean for the wudu the ulama have differed with regards to one of the particular issues raised in this hadith with regards to when a person wakes up from sleep is it uh, uh, an obligation to make uh, to wash your hands. So Imam Shafi'i and the Jamhur of the ulama, most of the ulama, they said that that uh, that after every sleep, regardless of whether it's the night or the day, because the Prophet sallallahu said min no me, he said in general that from a person's sleep that uh, a person should wash their uh, hands. And Imam Ahmed and the Zahiriya, they say this hadith is specifically related to when a person wakes up from the night sleep because the term batat yaduhu and bat mostly refers to sleeping at night. So this is one of the ways in which the ulama differed about uh, when a person wakes up should they wash their hands. So we know that it's from the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, that you should wash your hands when you wake up. Another thing uh, where they differed is regarding whether it's an obligation or it is a mustahab that is recommended. And so most of the ulama say that it is recommended that a person uh, washes their hands. Uh, when they, they get up. And the contention here is this is due pr uh, primarily because 
that during the time of the Prophet وسلم, that they used vessels in water containers to make their wudu and it might require them to dip their hands into the container to make wudu so instead they would pour the water out uh, and to wash their hands they would wash their hands three times before making wudu from the container so this was the way in which the Prophet ﷺ cleaned his hands before so that way if there was any impurities or anything uh, that was any kind of filthiness or any kind of dirtiness on your hands, you've washed it before you begin to put your hand in and make wudu and put it in your mouth and put it in your nose and so forth. So the Prophet وسلم, said uh, in, in relation to that hadith that uh, when a person wakes up, then he should wash his hands three times before he enters it into the uh, vessel used for cleaning themselves. So this is from the Sunnah to at least wash your hands and as we mentioned majority of the scholars on that it is recommended that it is not an obligation. Some of them say that it's an obligation. So the the best thing is to, to always try to make that. We know it's from the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, as he commanded in this hadith and the, as the ulama mentioned that an amr yufi the wujub, that when there's a commandment in the Quran or in the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, then the origin of that command is that it is an obligation, that it is something wajib. If, if the Prophet, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands something in the Quran, wa aqimu salat, you know, it, this is in fi'l amr, this is a commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a person should pray. So then we know if prayer is an obligation in the religion from this from this principle. And the same, likewise, if the Prophet ﷺ commanded something, then the asl of that, the origin of that command is that it's an obligation unless other evidence comes in the Sunnah or in the Quran to show us that it, uh, to take it from an obligation to something that is mustahab. Another evidence, uh, another hadith or something to show us that this obligation is actually uh, not an obligation, but it is something mustahab, or it has another ruling. And that is an important uh, fit principle. Some of the benefits we gain from this hadith is the obligation to clean the nose and blow it out with water. To clean the nose, and Imam Noah, he said, and this is clear evidence that making istin shak, istin thar, you know, cleaning the nose, putting water in the nose, and blowing it out is from the wudu and is an obligation. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the ayat of wujuhukum wa idikum ila marafiq in the ayat about uh, wudu that faqsulu uh, wujuhukum that Allah commands us to wash our face. And then the ulama say of course the nose and so forth is a part of the face. So that's included in that command even though Allah didn't command specifically with the nose but it's contained in the general commandment to wash the face the nose is a part of the face and therefore you must make you must clean your nose so that's one of the arguments that the ulama make for those that say that it's an obligation to clean the nose to wash the nose and they also use this hadith as evidence as well as the prophet sallallahu commanded it there another benefit of this hadith is also the permissibility of using witter, using making using three stones in order to make istinja if a person needs to make uh, ist uh, uh, um, not istinja but if a person needs to make istijmar if they need to clean themselves with rocks for example a person who hikes who camps and so forth they're out in the woods or they're in a place and there's no water and they need to make uh, they need to clean themselves well alhamdulillah that's the ni'mah of the sharia it's uh, that the Prophet sallallahu Showed, uh, illustrated for us in his command that, that we make istijmar, that you can use three stones or something, you cannot use bones and you cannot use, uh, of course, righteous things, you cannot use pages of the Quran or something like this, you cannot use, stone, uh, um, you cannot use bones and you cannot use uh, rof, which is animal dung, you cannot use animal dung. Animal dung is impure and you cannot use that for istinja. And the bones you cannot use, and one of the reasons the 
they say, because they say it's the food of the jinn. It's one of the reasons for that. Also, they say it's rigis, that is impurity. So, that you cannot use those things for sijmar, but if you have, for example, you can't find even th stones, and you have to use some leaves, or you have to use something else, that you can use that, and the ulama, they also make, some of the ulama make bayas from this, that you can make, use three pieces of toilet paper, or tear it up into three pieces, or something if you don't have, if you don't, you're in a restroom and it doesn't have, uh, it's out of water, but there is toilet paper, then you use that, you have to use something in order to clean yourself, to make istinja, and the least amount, we learn from this hadith, that the least amount that you can do, is it you should always do witr, that's from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and he commanded it, and the least amount of witr or uh, or the odd number is three. If you if three is not enough to get rid of the najasa, to get rid of the in, uncleanliness, the filth that still is on you, then use five. If five doesn't do it, use seven. If seven doesn't do it, use nine, like this. Also, another benefit uh, that we gain from this hadith is the permissibility or the that is a part it's mishru or it's legislated to wash the hands after sleeping uh, and we mentioned the khilaf of the ulama regarding that another thing is uh, the sheikh mentioned sheikh ali basam he mentioned wudu wudu min an -nom. he said that it's an obligation to make wudu when a person wakes up so some of the ulama they say it's an obligation and sheikh ali basam is one of them and and uh, and others who have that goal that it's an obligation that when you make uh, when you wake up that you should make wudu. So we know al-aqal that it's from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu You know you should try to be in wudu as much as possible uh, and before you sleep as well. Uh, also, this hadith shows us the impermissibility of of putting your hands after sl sleeping uh, in a water vessel that you need to make ghusl from or you need to make wudu from or what have you and the ulama some of them say it's tahrim that it is completely prohibited it's haram that means you get a sin for it some say it's karahiya that it is makru or it is disliked and that is another uh, benefit from this hadith there are other benefits, but we'll, we'll stop there, and those are the main important ones for us. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, and bless us with the al-nafi, al-rizqan tayyibah, wa amal al-mutaqabbin, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.